everyone, today we are going to do a very very requested video that I have been putting off for far too long, so it's time I do it, and it is called the How to Take Notes on Math Textbooks. So if you're taking any algebra or um, calculus, or I personally am taking research and statistics class, I thought maybe I should do a video like this, kind of just to help you out, and at first I didn't really know what textbooks to use. Um, so I actually picked this one. This one is a book on the GMAT, uh, so kind of like the exam that you have to take if you want to get into an MBA. Long story short, I thought I was going to do an MBA in the past, but I changed my mind. However, I did keep the books because I think they're really, really, really cool and uh, interesting. And I did start to take notes on it, but bottom line, no, I did not do the GMAT, so I can't really help you out there if you want advice on that. But the reason why I picked this book as an example is because it shows you very, very basic math. So this video can be applicable for someone who's like, let's say, in high school, in CJEP, in college, and in university. So I wanted really to cover all those levels with this book. And basically what I'm going to do today, I'm just going to show you an overview of how I take notes on math textbooks. And just to give you a sample idea of how um, math textbooks are organized. So basically I'm just going to zoom in here as per usual and just going to show you how this book is organized. Basically it has sections. So this one is arithmetic and you have a little description here of what it entails. And I'm just going to switch the little page. So generally all math textbooks, well actually all the ones I came across are pretty much look the same way. That is, you have a written explanation of what you have to do, then you have the formula, after that you have an example, see this is the wordy explanation, then you have some examples and some questions, and after that you have practice questions that you can do yourself. So that's how this book is organized, and that's like I said how pretty much all my math textbooks were organized and it looks pretty intimidating if you have an issue with math like I do. Uh, but basically this is how it looks like. There you go. And now how do we take notes on this Anna? OMG I am lost and I don't like numbers. Well you're not the only one. So let's see what I did. Um, let's take a look in here. So I'm just gonna show you how a little overview of my notes so you can get a feel for what I was going for. Notice that I didn't use any colors in my notes, which usually I do, but I, like I said, I didn't have time to go over it because I changed my mind. I decided not to take the GMAT. And also, I know this pages on this side are blank. That's because I wanted to give myself practice questions on each page that relate to what I was writing. Just so I have like a, a, a feel for the pro problem. So that's why these pages are blank. Because I wanted to give myself practice questions that relate to what I was reading here. Just so like I have a visual. It is very, very, very important and essential in my opinion that when you are studying math, you need to practice as much as you can. So learn the formula and then practice, 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 practice. I think I had prepared for myself 20 for like GMAT, the math section exams to practice. So it's just repetition. Once you get the hang of it, your, your brain is just going to click. It's very, it's pretty much all about application. So I'm going to give you a solid example here of what I personally do. And let me just show you right here. So basically I kind of follow the book. Um, and by what I mean is I give myself like a small definition because I don't know in some of your math classes but in some of mine we have multiple choices so a lot of like key math words I underline and I remember them because you never know and multiple choice that hey what else they can ask you right and after I have my formulas that I also make that I always make sure to like make it pop so this 
honestly, if I have the time to, if I had the time to do it, I would just like highlight it in yellow just so it pops and that I remember it. So technically, these are formulas. Every time I see a rectangle like this, in my head is remember it. It's a formula. Remember it. It's a formula. And this is all the blah 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 that can maybe help me understand it better. So I think that's pretty important to do. And also, what I do for myself is I always, always give an example with numbers. So basically, you write the formula down and after that, you give yourself an example with actual numbers. I think it's more... It registers better with me anyways. And I think it's a really, really... Just to give you an example, multiplying algebraic expressions, that doesn't tell me anything. Neither does this phrase. However, if you look here and you can sort of try to see what happened along the way, it's going to click in your head. So definitely when taking notes on math textbooks, give yourself plenty of examples. And like I said, if you want to try my technique, leave a page blank here or you can do like three or four examples just next to where you took notes. So you have like, okay, see here, I'm capable of doing this. So if ever you get lost in the example you gave yourself here, you can always look on the other ones on the next page. So basically, you, as you can see, I have titles that are underlined, I have little points that I need to memorize or something that will help me better understand how to do this, and then I do this. So it's gonna stand out and I'm gonna memorize it. So basically, see my little example, see? Example! How many did I give myself? Two for this one. To, just to summarize what I've been babbling about for the past seven minutes is that I put the title of what I am doing, so now factoring, a little explanation of some key terms or anything that will help me understand the formula better. After that, I follow it with some formulas that I always, always like... Um, contour, highlight, or put in a little rectangle just so they pop and I know that I need to memorize these for the exam and I do not, I never forget to give myself examples, concrete ones. Look how many I gave myself here. And in the examples, don't just like write down this and then the answer. Do it the whole way through just so you understand the entire process that is going on here. And after that, try to practice one or three problems on the other page. That way, if for some reason you get lost in your notes and you're like, really, I don't understand how I got this, you can look at other examples here that you did and maybe it's gonna refresh your memory, so it's gonna help you quite a lot. Math is your friend, don't be afraid of it. It's just numbers, they can't hurt, right? So with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I wasn't going too fast for you. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it and if you want to see more math videos. And subscribe to me if you like what you see. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. Yes, I did notice I hit, I think, a thousand subscribers, which is like insane. I was never expecting that. So I want to thank you personally from the bottom of my heart for watching my rambly videos. All I want to do is help out. So thank you for letting me help out, I guess. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I will definitely see you in my next video. Bye guys!